morning, everybody. Welcome to Christ the Cornerstone Church. We're glad you could join us here in person. And those that are watching on Facebook, we welcome you as well. Um, as you know, we are now having indoor services here at the church, uh, maskless and uh, without social distancing. We also have our fellowship hall open with some coffee and some sweets back there. So if you come in earlier before church starts or after church, you want a fellowship, please feel free to do so. Um, if you are unvaccinated, we do ask that you wear a mask, however. So we want to keep people still safe, uh, those that have not been vaccinated. So uh, yesterday we were able to feed uh, some folks some great groceries here. We had about 75 uh, families that we fed yesterday. And yeah, I know, amen, amen. And someone else, we're getting more food to somebody today of what's left. So we're trying to just, as people have a need, we try to meet that need. So thank you, everyone who donates to our outreach, uh, community outreach program. It's an opportunity for us to help people physically, but also they feel the love of God here, I'm sure, as a result of that as well. Uh, the second Tuesday of the month going forward, by the way, we're going to have um, My Care Medical, which is a... Uh, the, it's a clinic here in Pinellas Park, as well as Humana. They've uh, co-joined together to sponsor a food pantry the second Tuesday of every month going forward. So that'll be at 10 o'clock until 1130. So we do have some flyers in the back if you want to take some and share those with others as well. So that's a secondary kind of uh, food pantry that we're, the church is also being a part of as well. So whatever we can do to reach out and touch people, uh, we, God keeps opening all those doors for that. So we're blessed by that. Um, our, our Bible study is on hiatus for another couple of weeks on June the 2nd, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here in the, in the uh, Fellowship Hall. We will have a Bible study led by Pastor Jamie. It's going to be the fruit of the Spirit. going to be 10 weeks, and you're going to get to learn all about the various fruit of the Spirit. Make a nice fruit salad out of it, so, uh, <laughs> which is awesome. So uh, if, you, if you'd like to join us for that, um, we'd love to have you be a part of that. You can jump in at any point because it's going to be nine fruit of the Spirit. So uh, if you can't make it for all the 10 weeks, you can still join in at any time, 7 o'clock Wednesdays going forward, beginning June 2nd. Um, also, uh, I know the uh, Deacon Dawn and Amber are leading the Zoom Bible study. That's also on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. So Wednesday night is the time for Bible study. So if you'd like to join them, you can uh, call uh, D uh, yeah, Amber's phone number is on our website or see her, and she'll let you know how to get linked up with Zoom for that as well if you want to join that now in the process, waiting for June 2nd to get here. All right, I think that's everything as it relates to announcements. Um, we're here to worship God, hear the word of God, sing some praises to God, and just leave this place better than when we came, right? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here. We thank you, God, that you continue to use this church to be a ministry to others, God, wherever they may be. Whether they ever walk in these doors or are, are outside of these doors forever, God, we're still here to serve all your people. And we thank you, God, for the ministry that we have through Facebook and through our website, God, and all the many ways that you're using us, God, to bring forth your love for all. We thank you, God, that you continue to grow us, continue to teach us, and continue to bless us in so many ways. We know that the Holy Spirit will now descend upon this service, and we will be lifted up by you, God, as we always are. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. morning. Hope you all are doing well. So um, I've had a lot of dreams in my life, a lot of things I've wanted to do. You know, I'm very ambitious in my brain. <laughs> and... Um, you know, I get that whole midlife crisis thing because, you know, I'm 57 now, and um, I go, oh, my goodness, I've got less ahead of me than I have behind me, and that went by just like that. <laughs> so, you know, I get that, and I'm just like, okay, i got to get moving on these dreams, man. i got to get, get doing everything that I want to get done, you know. And I, my brain gets going like that, and I start to get a little anxious, and, and I start to feel like I need to go buy an expensive car. And uh, <laughs> but um, I tell you what, um, two great dreams in my life. Um, well, three actually. You know, my relationship with God, of course, being able to trust in Him when I get in those crazy moments and just go, okay, chill. God's got it. 
you know, he's been with you so far, he's not going anywhere, so just chill out. Whatever dreams are supposed to happen is what's going to happen, you know. And um, my kids were definitely uh, uh, another dream that has just been amazing. And, of course, <laughs> finding Amber was a huge dream. So, um, so I just, you know, this song to me, that's, this is what goes through my mind when we sing this song, Trust in You. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I've tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight, no matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Truth is you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't give the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I reach out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher. Your ways are always good. There's not a place where I'll go. You've not already stood. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 Good word right there. Good word. <coughs> and you know what? If I get to that end of the end of that song <coughs> and I still feel like I'm anxious and I'm not trusting, I just go back and sing it again. <laughs> <laughs> as many times as you need. That's right, Pastor Joyce. <laughs> I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life
life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this Please mountain stand. with my hands Let's wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We do just give it all up to you, Father. We give it all up to you right now, Lord God. Whatever's in our mind, whatever's in our heart, Lord God, if it's, if it's just stuff and it's not of you, Lord God, we just give it up to you now. And we lay it at your feet. We ask, Lord God, for your blessing. We ask for your filling of your Holy Spirit, Father. And we ask, Lord God, if we're off the track, get us back on the track. We just thank you so much, God, for loving us, for giving us, and always being there for us. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Amen. Amen. Speaking of giving, <laughs> I have the opportunity to ask for the offering this morning. And the offerings that we often ask of you is to give of yourself. Always give of yourself, your gifts, your talents, who you are as a person. That's the best gift you can ever give to God and give to this church and give to other people. So just be you and just keep on giving who you are and how God's going to use you to bless others' lives and, and the ways in which you often give also monetarily to this church through your tithes and through your offerings and make something beautiful out of all the people that are here and it enhances people's lives around us and it improves their lives all the time because of the generous gifts that you give to our church. And Jesus said, give and it shall be given to you. Pressed down, shaken over, running over into your lap. Whatever measure you use to give, will be given back to you. 
So the more you give, God's going to measure it back to you, and then it's going to run over your lap. You're not going to be able to hold the blessings. And blessings don't always come in financial gain, but they come in spiritual gain, which is by far even more precious and more worth, worthwhile. Amen. So for those of you watching, if you'd like to use our website, you, there's a uh, donate page on there. You can uh, donate to the church through uh, the Secure Giving uh, app that's there. Um, also, a link, I should say. Also, PayPal, or if you want to use our mobile app, you can do that as well. If you want to send us a check, we'll take that as well. And cash is also welcome here at this church. So uh, the, the ways that you give, uh, all of you give so generously, and uh, particularly uh, this during this pandemic time, this church has sponsored, been sponsored by all of your gifts and, and all the ways in which you've given to us, and it's changed the lives of so many people that we don't even know about because of the ministries that we have at this church. It will always be a church of ministry to others. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the generous gift that you've given us in Jesus Christ. You've given us eternal life. You give us everything we need that sustains us. You provide for every one of our needs and then some. We thank you, God, for all the many people that have given into this ministry and ministries of this church. We ask a blessing upon them. And we especially thank you, God, for all the gifts of all the people that are in this church who have ever been in this church and will ever be in this church. They're the greatest gifts that you give us all so that the body of Christ can be shown to be your love on earth. And we thank you now for everyone that's here this day and those that are watching. Bless all of their lives with your love. In Jesus' name, amen.
So now we come to the altar with our prayers. So very often in the Old Testament particularly, they would have to find their way to Jerusalem or find their way in the desert and make an altar so they could take and bow down before God in prayer. And then as the church was built in, and Solomon built the temple, people would come there and pray. But Solomon also said that if anybody prays towards that temple, towards God, that God would hear their prayers and would answer them. And Jesus said, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. So we see he is the temple that came here to teach us that prayer changes everything and anything, no matter what it is. So if you have a prayer on your heart this morning, I know sometimes we, we get busy and we, we have, we're trying to do life and we're trying to solve problems on our own, and we don't always take the time to go to God in prayer. And many of us have needs, some of which are unspoken some that are not written in this book. So it's time to come to the altar. It's time to surrender yourself if that's what you need. It's time to seek forgiveness if that's what you need. It's time to ask God for whatever it is that seems impossible in your life that you need an answer to prayer for. It's time now to come to God. We'll allow you right now to just take a moment to just come to the altar, come before Jesus, come before God, and God's going to hear your prayers. And then we'll read the prayers from this book. Most loving God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We come seeking your face, seeking your answers, and seeking your power in all of our lives and the lives of everyone around this world. We ask you, God, to let your love and peace and joy prevail, to overcome every evil that's trying to come against us, God, and to come against all people. We pray now, God, that it is your love that rains down upon us all and Take that love within us, God, and use it to reach out and touch the lives of others. We pray today for everyone going through any kind of medical test and anyone in need of healing. Prayers for Candy, that she will have a great trip to see her mom and a safe return. Prayers for Pat, Grandma Pat, that she gets stronger. Prayers for Rhonda P. for health issues. Prayers for Rini. Prayers for a neighbor, Art, who will have his only leg amputated on Thursday. Prayers for an uncomplicated recovery and that he can adjust well. Prayers also for his wife, Trish. We pray also for anyone that's having difficulty in their relationships with their family, their friends, or their spouses. We ask you, God, to resolve all strife. We ask you, God, to just let your love be the healing bomb that comes upon all relationships, Lord. We ask you, God, that you would continue to bless this church and use this church to bring forth blessings to others. We thank you, God, for all the ways in which you continue to bless all of our lives. And I pray, God, for anyone who doesn't know you, may they come to know the genuine, authentic, unconditional love that we all have in you, God. And no matter who it is, God, you welcome everyone into your kingdom. So I pray for everyone, God, who's struggling, who's having difficulties with finances or difficulties in their work situations or needing work, those that are still struggling with any kind of illness, and particularly COVID. We pray for India. We pray for all the various countries around the world that still are not uh, fighting, the, who are fighting this disease and who need your healing touch upon them, God. We ask you, God, to continue to bless all the nations around the world. We pray, God, for peace in Israel, God, that you would bring your healing touch upon that nation and all nations around the world, God. Let's put an end to war once and for all, God. We ask for your 
unconditional power to come down to change people's hearts and minds, particularly the leaders of all the nations, God. May we come together as one people with one shepherd and one Lord. Help us, God, to be the people that bring your light into this darkness. And we thank you, God, for all the ways in which you're already answering all of our prayers. We just are awaiting you and every perfect response that all of us need. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, we thank you for being a good, good Father. No matter what our life experience has been, Father God, with our earthly fathers, you are a good, good Father. We just thank you so much for God. For your love for us, for your patience with us, and for your constant guidance. I pray, Father, we never look away, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stay on the path. Help us to just capture every blessing that you have in every moment for us and find our peace in your presence. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, two words can change everything. Just two words. Did you know that? Now, the question is, what are those two words? Do you want to know? <laughs> well, so far, we've sung some of those words. Because <laughs> there's more than just two words. But every time we use diff two different words all the time uh, throughout our life, those two words can mean everything and anything for us. First two words are, I am. I am. Whatever follows that is who you are, which is the second part of that. You are. Also is, is some, the second part of the two words. And the third 
part of that is what's in the scriptures for us today. And Deacon Dawn, if you could turn the lights back on in the back, your chair moved against that. So uh, I got a few more words there, right? Thank you. I got more words to say. She's trying to, I understand what's going on here. Ah. I've been doing this too long, though. <laughs> Thank you. Another, another couple of two words, right, that are great. But those aren't the words I'm going to talk about today, although please keep in mind your I am's that you say about yourself are so critical to how you feel, what you do, and how you also have a future in what you create for yourself. And then secondly, who you are, meaning who God is. As we proclaim who God is, we also are empowered by that. And because God's in us and we're in the likeness of God, I am like God, right? You are as well. So that's, those are the parts of this sermon this morning to kind of give you a little free extras this morning. A couple of, couple of words that are important. But the other words I was thinking of come to, out of Psalm 107, so I'm going to go there this morning. And um, they, they're words to me that matter when you're going through something difficult to eat, some difficulty or you need something from God. Those two words can matter a lot as well. So Psalm 107 says this. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has saved you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east, west, north, and south. Some wandered in the desert, lost and homeless. Hungry and thirsty, they nearly died. Lord, help, they said little hint they cried in their trouble and he rescued them from their distress he led them straight to safety to a city where they could live let them praise the Lord for his great love and for all his wonderful deeds for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things some sat in darkness and deepest gloom miserable in chains that is why God helped, I'm sorry, that they were in a place where they had scorned God. And unfortunately, they kept themselves bound up. And they fell, and no one helped them rise again. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He led them from the darkness and the deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Chains are broken. They were set free. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for all his wonderful deeds to them. For he broke down their prison gates of bronze and he cut their bars of iron. He set them free. You've been set free by God, been imprisoned by sometimes in life. Some, uh, have we all have, right? Guess what? The bars are broken. The chains are gone. You're free. Hallelujah. And let us praise God because of that. Let's walk in the light. Let's walk in joy. Let's walk in happiness because we've been set free. Guess what? You don't have to go back into that prison anymore, ever again. And if somebody tries to push you in there, you just push on back. And you say, Lord, help. Somebody in the front row understands my two words. <laughs> Some of us were fools in their rebellion. Oh, boy. Mm, they suffered for their sins. Mm. Their appetites were gone and death was near. Lord, help! They cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. Whew. He spoke, and they were healed, snatched from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for her, all the wonderful deeds to them. Let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Anybody here have been foolish ever once before? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, lots, too many times. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. We don't want to hear about any of those things. However, <laughs> by the grace of God, we're even here, right, for some of us, correct? Ooh, glory. If I'd have gone down, never mind. So, <laughs> 
But God snatched us from that, took us from that, brought us out of that place, took us from the place where we used to use other things to make us happy, to find, to deal with life, trying to, you know, sometimes deal with things in, uh, with other things that don't work. We've all tried many avenues to solve our problems, have we not? And some of us just like to self-medicate and, you know, just, you know, whatever. So that said, we don't do that anymore, do we? We walk in thanksgiving and joy that we don't live there anymore, do we? We've been set free from that. So make it a a sacrifice of thanksgiving and sing joyfully uh, that you've been redeemed and set free of those things, whatever they might be. Some went off in ships, plying their trade routes around the world. They, too, observed the Lord's power in action, his impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke, and the wind rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and sank again to the depths, and the sailors cringed in terror. Sounds like a couple of familiar stories where Jesus was on a boat, right? (laughs) And Paul? (laughs) Anybody here had a rocky life? (laughs) Okay. Tossed around to and fro. You don't know where you're going. You're all in the dither. Hmm. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and we were at their wit's end. We've all been there, haven't we? Just don't know what's going to happen. The waves are coming. Things are coming against us. We're getting overwhelmed. We feel as though we're going to drown in our sorrows, drown in the situations in our life, drown in the circumstances of our life. And then we cry out, Lord, help. And he saved them. Huh. Well, that's happened a few times. Hmm. Should I keep on going? <laughs> he calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. What a blessing was that stillness. Huh. We made it through. It's calm again. As, they brought, as he brought them safely into harbor. Let them praise the Lord for his grace great love, and for all the wonderful deeds to them. You notice that every time that we're in trouble, it's because of God's great love. When we yell, Lord, help, no matter whether or not we're on the top of the mountain, the bottom of the barrel, whether we're walking in his will or we're walking away and we're on the wrong path, when we yell, Lord, help, what happens? He helps. Isn't it good to know that? I'm not suggesting that you do, but even if you fall astray, God, when you need help, when you say, Lord, help, no matter who you are, God is going to, even though you don't deserve it, even if you're unworthy, even if you really messed up your own life, and you, uh, uh, uh. what are the two words we always have to speak when we need something and or we're in a over our heads and whatever it is that life is happening to us. Lord help. Those things, those words change everything. God changes rivers into deserts and springs of water into dry land. He turns the fruitful land into salty wastelands. He also turns deserts into pools of water. He brings the hungry to settle there on that land, and he builds their, helps build their cities. They sow their fields, plant their vineyards, and harvest their bumper crops. How he blesses them. When they decrease in number and become impoverished through oppression, trouble, sorrow. God rescues the poor from their distress and increases them. The godly will see these things and be glad. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history, our history. Have we not lived through some history? Has it been a desert from time to time? Been a little bit of salty water, a lot of Clorox, and a lot of toilet paper, and a lot of other things that one never even thought we'd have to think about or worry about. We got afraid of people even. And unfortunately, evil and hatred reared its ugly head, trying to cause division, trying to cause something that causes chaos and strife and anger and violence. And what did we say? 
Lord, help. <sighs> Lord, help. And look what God is doing. Look what God is doing. We don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And I know that may, even if other times of sorrow come and trouble come and calamity comes and hatred comes and, and deceit comes and all the awful things that, that humanity can do to one another comes again, what are we going to do in the midst of that? We're going to say, Lord, help. Lord, help. And because of his wonderful love, his unconditional love for all humanity. We mere mute mortals who are so afflicted with so many faults and flaws, so imperfect. We have a perfect God who says, okay, I'm going to help you anyway because I love you so much, no matter who you are. All we ever have to say is, Lord, help. Lord, help. Tell you a little story, and that's where some of this sermon came from this past week. Because I, everything to me is a sermon of some type, if you know me well enough. Our church was delivered a shed. Hallelujah for those of you that are, yay! Oh yeah! <laughs> so the old rickety one that doesn't have any doors anymore <laughs> and is rusted shut practically. <laughs> that served us well. We thank you for it, God. <laughs> God saw fit through all the generosity of others to see the need that we have, and we got a 20 by 8 shed delivered here on the property. Yay! And so on Friday, we're supposed to come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday it shows up. And it's parked in the back, pallet, a pallet of 10 foot long boxes. Oh, yes. That miraculous shed that's supposed to be put together on the property all, there it was in boxes on a pallet. So Pastor Jamie and I, we drive up there and we look at it. <laughs> right parked out front, right in front of our, the, uh, the annex building, beautifully parked there, perfectly square. I called the driver and said, how come you didn't call us and tell and help us put it in the building? We don't do that, ma'am. You're going to have to carry it in there yourselves. Oh, okay. Huh. It's 800 pounds. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but there's five boxes, so you divide that by five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we looked at it. And I said, Move. Get in the building. It looked like a box full of mountains. And so we walked around it, looked at it. And we started to think about who could we call? Well, and Pastor Jamie, in her greatest faithful voice, says to me, we can do this. I said, uh, which we? Oh, you and me. We. Okay, all right. All right, I can do it. All right. Lord, help. We stood there on either end and said, Lord, help. I said, where's Samson when you need him? So, in her creative mind, she says, I'll back up the SUV. We'll push it in the back end. I'll back it around to the door, and we'll push it in the building. I said, I'm a good pusher. I can push. I'm not a good puller, but I'm a good pusher. If you've been around me as your pastor, I'm a great pusher. She does the pulling. <laughs> so... Backs it around, I snapped all the things, and so she backs it perfectly. I, you know, my life as a navigator. And I stood there and said, Lord, help. So we got behind the first one. And she says, on three. 
And we go, Whoa! one, two, three. Whoa! All right, wait a minute. I'm going to get a, get, a, get a better grip. So we got some gloves on. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll get a running start. And I'm thinking, you know, and I said, if we just put our weight behind it, that's like a lot of pounds. So sure enough, we, luckily it had those bands around it. So we grabbed those bands. She had a hold of hers. I went to the back. Lord, help. Yeah. Oh, right into the back of the SUV it went. Slid just like that. Wow, we got one. We're a quarter of the way through. You sure you don't want to call somebody? Yeah, I know. Oh, well, by the time they get here, we'll have this done. <laughs> uh, so, we managed to get all three of those into the building. And we had one more to go. It was on the ground. I'm not lifting it. You're not lifting it. Lord, help. So I, in my infinite wisdom, say, let's get a shovel. We'll use it as a lever. Right? Hey, man, I'm a smart pastor. So we get the shovel. We put it on the end. I stand on top of it. And I said, if you lift this, once you lift it off, if I go flying across the parking lot, come and find me later. Boing. That's what I was imagining. <laughs> so we decide to roll it on its side instead. Make sense? Got it on the side. Except for the fact when you put it on its side, the weight is trying to go this way. So Pastor Jamie's holding it. I'm putting it on its side. And it's sliding on top of Pastor Jamie's legs. So I grab those straps and say, Lord, help. Boom. I'm telling you. Push it ever so gingerly up to the door. Now we got to get it over the threshold. Do you know how much work we pastors have to do around here? <laughs> so thus the shovel came in handy once again put it on the edge I stood on top of it the box went like that I didn't know how I had that much weight <laughs> on three and I say three she says no one two three pushed it over the ledge one part of it Then she says, well, you know, we got it this far. This, tomorrow's pantry day. Somebody else can help us push this in here. Right? we got a zillion people coming tomorrow. I'm thinking, okay, we made it this far, however. we got three of these suckers to get in the door. I say to the box, get in there. Because when you say to the mountain, move it. I said, well, how about we back up the truck and use the back end of the truck to push it? Right? Right? Good idea. She says, Lord, help. No. <laughs> so, end of the story, what do you think happened? We used our determination, and I used these strong legs, and I said, I'm a great pusher. I'm going to push this box. I push more people in this church than anybody can ever imagine. I can push a box, and some of the people are a lot harder to push than this box would ever be. <laughs> Poo, there it went. Oh. <laughs> so 
So what's the point of the story? When you need help, ask for it. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> point of the story is this. When you call on God for help, he does provide it. Somehow, some way, only two Tylenol later, both of us were perfectly fine. So you could see sometimes in the physical, now maybe we're two people that, you know, we got to solve everything, but it was really God that helped us with that process. Pastor Jamie's intellectual creativity and my brute force, or vice versa, with God's help, with God's help, with God's help, it happened. And sometimes we don't seek God's help as much as we should. If we were going to try to do that by just ourselves, I can guarantee you we would have failed miserably, as fun as it might have seemed to watch us try to do it. So what I'm saying to all of you is that's just an example of how God can still help us through any kind of circumstance. That's something really physical that you think sounds like, uh-oh, I can't do this. But as soon as you call on God, truly, truly, I mean it for every cir circumstance in your life, God does help. Now, maybe he could have, you know, miraculously sent us some people just happened to try to drive by here and drive over to us. That would have been okay help too. I've had that happen in my life, loading boxes for the Dominican Republic in my little car with a man that rolled up in a wheelchair, and we put the boxes on his lap, and he put them in my car. True story. True story. So who are you in the story? Are you somebody who tries to solve problems only on your own? Fingers going like this. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm not saying it was through our own power. Please understand. It was not our power, really, that helped us accomplish what we did. I know truly, as much as we joke about it, it was God who helped us. And sometimes if we would just take hands off of our life for those circumstances where we can't fix things and we can't do things. It also means we need other people to help us and God sends those people to us. Or also, if you happen to just be alone and you don't have those people around you, God himself will help us. What are the no, more, very powerful words that all of us need to continue to say all the time, wherever you are in any life circumstance? Lord, help. If you have difficulty with a relationship, Lord help. If you have an illness, Lord help. If you have financial difficulty, Lord help. If you have trouble forgiving people, Lord help. If you can't move a mountain, Lord help. <laughs> if you're the mountain that, mountain that won't move, Lord help. <laughs> Change me, grow me, right? If you have trouble with your I am's and your you are's, say, Lord, help. Help me see me as you see me. Help me see others as you see them. Help me love the way you do, God. Help me move mountains of bias and prejudice and bigotry and hatred and apathy and discompassionate. I, did, I, don't know, I made up a word, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Lord, help. Lord, help. We want our church to continue to grow. We want you to grow. All we ever pray, most of the time, for all of you, as much as we try to push, pull, drag, um, coerce, uh, gently lead, <laughs> we always say, Lord, help. Lord, help. We don't have the answers to everything and anything some days, do we? but we know who does. So what's your favorite next two words you're going to say all the time as you go through the life journey you're on? Lord, help. And when you want this sermon to end, you're going to say, Lord, help. So be it. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you're always there for us. You're there when we don't even know it sometimes. We thank you, God, for all the ways in which you've set us free, you've redeemed us, you've taken away all of the chains that have bound us, you've helped us grow and become more powerful and more loving and more wonderful and more beautiful. You have created us in your image, God, and you've given us the power of your Holy Spirit within us that can truly, through our faith and trust in you, move mountains out of our way. So we pray now, God, that each and every time we're ever faced with anything in our life for which we cannot change it or we, can't, we need help for it, we're going to turn to you, God, and say, Lord, help. And after you do, every single time, and you, and you take us to that place where we've never been before and give us victory, we're going to also say, Lord, thank you. We thank you so much that you love us the way you do. And we're going to praise you for every wonderful deed you've done for us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock for a song and a prayer uh, through Facebook. And uh, if you need any help uh, moving things, Lord help. Amen. God bless you. Mm -hmm.